of Inclusive Innovation for Nesta in the UK, Madeleine Gabriel. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Madeleine Gabriel from Nesta, an innovation foundation in the UK. And to kick things off this afternoon, we have a quick presentation to make. It's with great pleasure that I invite to join me on stage the Portuguese Minister for Administrative Modernization, Maria Marquez, the president of the Calouste Gulbenkian Foundation, Isabel Mota, and Portugal's EU Commissioner for Research, Science and Innovation, Carlos Moedas. presentation with a quick story. In 2013, Dutch student Dave Hackins went travelling and everywhere he went he saw plastic waste. Now not only was this a great environmental pollutant, it was a huge waste of resources. He started thinking, what if ordinary people could make use of this waste plastic to make new products? he started to research plastic recycling. Now, plastic comes in many different forms, so it's actually really hard to recycle, and this is why it normally just happens in big plants. But Dave was determined to make this possible on a small scale. Fast forward a few years, and he's designed four machines that everyday people can use to shred, melt, and reform plastic into new products. The blueprints are available open source, so anyone, anywhere can download and build them with the support of an online community. There are now hundreds of these precious plastic mini recycling plants around the world, and some of the people are using them even to earn a living. I would really recommend going to his website because it's a fantastic project, and um, he's made some really, really entertaining videos about his journey. Now, precious plastic is an example of social innovation. That's to say, innovating to solve a pressing social problem and doing it in a way that involves people. So you're innovating with them, not just for them. And this is a growing movement around the world. It's not just enthusiastic students that are doing it. It's also large companies and even governments. And um, you can meet some more of these initiatives outside the stage in the social innovation village and they'll happily tell you about what they're doing. But it's really easy to think of this stuff as just you know, nice, heartwarming activities that we can all feel good about while the real business of innovation goes on elsewhere. So my question is, what if we turn that around? What if social good was the point of innovation? Think of the huge amount of talent just here at Web Summit. If we could harness all of that for social good, we could make an enormous difference. So we're thinking about how to make this happen. And with colleagues in the Social Innovation Community Project, which is funded by Horizon 2020, we started to put together what we've slightly and pompously called a declaration. It's a list of policy ideas that we think governments could implement to try and get social good at the heart of innovation. And we've done that with contributions from over 350 people around Europe. Now, the declaration has 10 policy ideas. I won't talk you through all of them now. You'll be glad to know. But if you do want to find out more, come and see the, uh, the project booth just outside and my colleagues will talk you through. I'll just give a quick flavor though. Governments are really an important customer for social innovation, but public procurement practices can be really hard for small, innovation, small organizations to crack into. So we'd like to see some um, more innovative use of methods like pre-commercial procurement to help small innovative organizations. Social innovation is also more common in urban areas, cities, and quite frankly, in places that are better off. So we'd like to see investment in hubs of expertise right across Europe. 
and we're also recommending investing in what we've called social innovation fellowships, where people like Dave Hackens could get some support, a stipend to set up new projects. Ultimately, we're asking governments to see innovation not just as a tool for transforming economies, but for transforming societies. The EU alone is likely to spend somewhere in the region of 100 billion euros from 2021 to 27 on research and innovation. So think what we could achieve by putting social good at the heart of those programs. In some ways, these ideas might be audacious, but we think they're also achievable. And we've got nearly 500 people from 25 EU countries who have already supported our declaration. Uh, we're working on the other three countries. That's right, at the moment there are still 28 countries in the EU. Now, this whole process started a year ago at a conference here in Lisbon, organised by the European Commission, the Gulbenkian Foundation and the Portuguese government. So I'm totally thrilled to be back in Lisbon to talk about the declaration with some of the decision makers who could make it happen. Carlos Moedas, I'll come to you first. What message would you give to those people who supported the declaration and what do you think its legacy could be? First of all, thank you so much. It's really a great pleasure to be here. Um, I want to thank the minister and the Gulbenkian Foundation uh, for being here and for being so uh, good at being European partners for looking at social innovation. My message is that if we politicians will not change it, you, your generation, will change it. Because innovation today is about purpose, about doing something that can fulfill you as a human being, and that you feel that you are doing some difference. And so if you look at the millennials and the younger people, they're not looking for a job. They're looking to change the world. And that's a big difference from my generation in the 70s, where I was educated by my parents to find a job. That was my purpose. And today, the purpose of all these young people is totally different. So it's up to us, to uh, basically European Union, to receive this declaration that uh, comes from so many, but with really the Gulbenkian Foundation and the Portuguese government, and we should acknowledge that and the role of the minister, Maria Manuel, here sitting with us. So in the European Union, we will put more money into social innovation, not because it's trendy, but because we believe the future of innovation is about social innovation. And I can tell you, you told us about the story uh, about the plastics in the oceans. And uh, five year, four years ago, 2014, when I started this job, I met this young guy from the Netherlands called Boyan Slot. And Boyan Slot came to my office and said, you know, I've just dropped out of university because I went to Greece and I was basically in the summer and I saw so many plastics that I said to myself, I have to find a solution. And Boyan Slot, like 20 years old, drops out of university, looks at ways of doing a system that should be totally different. Instead of grabbing the plastics, the plastics can be driven by the hydraulics and the waves to a point and it just gets everything and it cleans the oceans. And instead of taking 100 years to clean the oceans, he can do it in 10 years. Two years later, I saw him and he had raised like 15 million euros. And you know, that's, those are the stories. Those are the stories. And it's not about the politicians, it's about those stories. And so I really want as European Commission to keep investing on, on that. Thank you very much. And Maria Marquez, Portugal has been, um, Portugal's been a pioneer in supporting social innovation. Why would you say social innovation is so important to your vision? And what would you say national governments should be doing to support it? Thank you very much. Uh, let me start. Uh, innovation for us, for the Portuguese government and for me, it's for people and done by people. It's for everybody that's here. Thank you very much to attend yeah. this session and to be interested in social innovation. And Portugal was the first uh, of the first program financed by European Social Fund to support uh, uh, social innovation projects. It has uh, 150 million euros 
for, fina for financial instruments aligned with the project's life cycle. Yeah. It means capacity building after um, partnerships for impact, social impact bonds, and uh, to finish, we are going to launch tomorrow at the Web Summit uh, uh, Social Innovation Fund yeah. to projects uh, in the other phase, in the last phase of life. And since 2016, we invest in more than 230 projects in areas such as in employment, active aging, people with disabilities, digital inclusion, very important, no people left behind yeah. or school dropout. And uh, we have done, uh, in collaboration with the third sector, with startups uh, and with investors they, in order to experiment and after develop new solutions such as to give you some examples, teaching code with the Fundação Gulbenkian to our children to improve math and uh, language school uh, grades, um, promoting social integration of and well-being among disabled people yeah. uh, through art and drama classes, or even using technology to fight loneliness and improve health monitoring among older citizens, or integrate migra migra migrants in Portugal uh, faster. Some of these solutions can be later be adopted as public policy and delivered by public yeah. entities, eventually in collaboration uh, uh, with, uh, with civil society. So we are very, very, very pleased to see our aspiring needs are reflected in this declaration. Congratulations to our commission and to European Commission and to everybody that um, uh, made this uh, uh, declaration. Uh, priorities and proposals. For instance, point eight, very, very important, dedicate to simplify social innovator access to European funds, please. Dear Commission, this is a very, very, this is a crucial point. Or point 10 about public procurement, pet finders, among other important suggestions in 10 priorities defined. We would like to be peers and work with the other European Union members uh, in affirming social innovation as a public policy tool, a way to improve our citizens' lives. We do believe that social triple A uh, is a must-do mission for European Union. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And Isabel Motor. Worldwide, philanthropy has something like $1.5 trillion at its disposal. So what would you say philanthropies and foundations can do to support social innovation? And I also wanted to ask, given that we're here in, at Web Summit talking about the changing technological landscape, how is the role of philanthropies and foundations changing? <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, I'm, I'm really talking about uh, philanthropy and uh, the role of foundations. Because <coughs> we believe that uh, foundations are organizations that uh, are committed with uh, the drive of change of the society. And uh, I, I also believe, we also believe that uh, uh, you have a unique position to do that because uh, we are independent we, uh, are, we have an ability to take risks yep. and uh, we um, have uh, uh, a good chance to make conveners, to make uh, uh, networks. So uh, that's why I think all over the, the world, uh, the big foundations um, like uh, uh, for, um, um, like um, um, Cariplo, like uh, Wellcome Trust, uh, and uh, well, others, and Gulbenkian, who we had already uh, um, been supporting uh, pioneer work uh, in what concerns areas like uh, health, education, and sustainability. And I said pioneer uh, projects. And here is uh, the change that we want, uh, uh, want to, to introduce, is that uh, once the social problems that we are facing, 
uh, the, the dimension and the huge uh, challenge like uh, migrations, like uh, inequalities, like uh, uh, <laughs> gender gap, <laughs> aging, aging, um, too mainstream, this is the, the key, too mainstream. Uh, the social uh, innovation agenda is crucial, is critical uh, in order to provide a framework mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, that has possibility to, to, to have solutions for such a big problem. Yeah. And uh, uh, this means a change in the, in the way how also uh, foundations are working and dealing with this agenda. So, one of the prior, uh, one of the most important thing is uh, using technology as a tool um, to enable social innovation. Because technology is absolutely, absolutely fundamental and a success for um, social innovation projects in what consider, uh, because they have the, uh, technology has the potential to scale and to give access to everybody. Yeah. And these are two things that are now in the agendas of the foundation, is scale and also give access to most of the people. And, uh, and more than that, uh, I'm convinced uh, that the next uh, wave, let us say, of philanthropists uh, will be tech entrepreneurs. Uh, that are currently, uh, they are building their for fortune and uh, more than that, they are more and more committed to, uh, to, to give back to the society. And so, um, if you look at uh, the Bill Gates, uh, Mark uh, uh, Zuckerberg, Sheen Parker and so on, they are all entrepreneurs. Uh, and, uh, uh, and as you know, all of them have commitment uh, in, uh, uh, to, gain, to give back to the, to the society. <laughs> and uh, this means a change of the game. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're out of time. I'd love to discuss this further. But you heard it here first from the Commissioner. Innovation is about social innovation these days. So in five years' time, if we come back to Web Summit, there won't be a social innovation village, there'll be a social innovation city. Thank you very much for your support, panel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sure we could probably come back to you in the future. Thank you. Thank you.